In this tutorial, we will learn how to work in the Pixel Persona. Feel free to open that file. It's in workshop folder number 4. I have a web page prepared for you. As you can see, when you open the file, you have a photograph to your left with a grey background and a photograph to your right with a grey background. So we will have to learn how to work in the Pixel Persona. But before I begin, I would like to show you how I created those orange boxes with different round edges. All I did is I went in here and I opened a simple rectangle. Move it up a bit so you can see better. I would like to have one around the corner. Up here we have the corner tool. With the corner tool enacted, I can go in here and make that corner round. I select my image. And up here you can see I have my designer persona and to the right I have my pixel persona. Now pay attention to the tools to the left when I click on the pixel persona. The tools have changed. Right now I use the selection brush tool. I go in here and I click on the background, click here on the background, click here on the background and click here on the background. Let's say if I don't make a good selection, I can also add or subtract the way I need it. Also, you can at any time change the brush size, make it bigger or smaller. The next step will be select invert pixel selection. Here I could right away make soft edges, but I don't like to do that right now because I would like to make a refined selection. I click on refine. Right away I go into the mask possibilities. In the refine selection panel I have the choice to change the border width. I can make it smoother or less smooth. I can add on feather or not. I select my zoom tool, go a bit closer. Whenever you choose another tool, don't be worried that you leave the refine tool, you just go right back into it and you're back to where you were. Now I'm happy for right now and I say Output to New Layer with Mask. I click Apply and there you go. Now I can see I do need to make some changes. It actually did do a good job right here but it didn't do a good job outside. So now what I need to do is pay attention to my layers over here. Here is my image and to the right is my mask. To change a mask is pretty simple. You use your brush tool, black and white. This is your image and this is your mask. You can go back and forth. I open it just quick so it's easier for you to see. My mask is selected and you can see the black is covering but it didn't cover perfectly so I need to paint now by hand a bit. I select my regular brush tool, paintbrush, white is getting rid of the mask and black is adding to the mask. The other thing I need to do is of course to reduce the brush size and clean up whatever the machine wasn't able to do. Now here too try to make your brush size smaller. Same thing here. Now another trick instead of going up here and changing the width all the time is holding down Ctrl and Alt with two fingers and with your left finger on your mouse you drag to your left to make the radius smaller and you drag to your right to make the radius bigger. Going up you make your radius softer, going down you make your radius harder. That's a very quick way to fix your mask. Then I go to the image to the right. I again take the selection brush tool. With the selection brush tool and my image selected, I make my selection. Try to select the image. It doesn't matter if you select the background or the image. I usually prefer to work from the background. And then I invert the selection, but that's up to you. Now I can see I have to go a bit bigger with my zoom tool. Again, selection brush. Maybe I go down with my radius, as I said before. Hold down Ctrl Alt at the same time and drag with your mouse to your left. Makes the radius smaller and then if you see that doesn't work then you have to go up here and I say add the selection. You need to pay attention that the selection really follows the shape. So here too I say add to selection. That's good enough. Now the next step will be 
select Invert Pixel Selection and I go again into Refine. As you've done that previously, you can see it's not that bad. With the same tool selected, I don't need to change the tool. I can see here needs to go over it a bit and I can see it doesn't really do a good job. So I have to add on the either background or foreground color and I just see which one it is. I try foreground first, maybe go a bit bigger. Don't worry when you choose the zoom tool that it might kick you out of the refine tool. You can also use shortcuts so that doesn't happen, but it can at any time also just go back into your selection brush tool, go back into refine and it's all still here. Now once I'm more or less done with my selection, I can go back into zoom, zoom to fit, and I have my image in the middle, and I say I'll put to new layer with mask, and click apply. Now the rest I probably have to do now inside my layer mask. I open it again, click on my mask, it's selected, I can see that here. I select my regular brush, I pay attention that black is up front. As I said before, click on the X key in your keyboard or do that up here and then you paint that out yourself. That's sometimes much easier. Holding down Control Alt, go to the, a little bit bigger with the radius. Since I work on this mask, I don't have to pay attention to the font down here and I just get rid of the mistakes. Now you can see you always have your image with your layer mask on top of your original. So there's nothing you can do wrong. This is a non-destructive way of getting rid of backgrounds. I go into View, Zoom, Zoom to Fit, and my web page will be ready. In the Vector Persona, I could make title changes. Let's say the t-shirts would be cheaper. That I can alter in my Vector Persona, and my Pixel Persona will be just in case I would like to work on the images one more time. In the next tutorial, we will create a postcard and learn how to create a layer mask manually.